This short video tells the story of Bob Abel and Dill Marinecraft, which was situated in Middle Street at the bottom of Copping Street for many years. Many clinker boats, which were stationed on Dill Beach, were built here. These are my recollections of the period when I served as a full-time apprentice with Bob, starting in 1961 at the age of 14. This story has no personal reflections on any part of the Abel family still alive. I hope you find it interesting. Hilary Robert Abel, or Bob as he was known, was born in 1916 and originated from Whitstable, where during the war he was involved with building the MTBs and as records go was also involved in building communication systems for submarines. His career took him into partnership and the company of Cox and Abel was formed. From accounts, Bob apparently fell out with Cox and moved to Dill, taking the yard over in Middle Street and it was called Dill Marinecraft. Bob and his wife Joan purchased Coppin House at the top of Coppin Street, which was once Tommy Upton's, having two children, Robert and Valerie. Building boats in the old clinker style was a skilled and professional job. The boat house in Middle Street housed a large bandsaw, a circular saw and a planer thicknesser. These were used for preparing timber, which the boats were built from. Much of the timber came from Faversham, and I recall on one occasion going with Bob to Faversham and on arrival we walked along a huge dike which had trees floating in it that had been, I assumed, delivered by ship. Bob picked out the elm and oak trunks he wanted and gave orders on how he wanted them cut. A week later these were delivered to Middle Street. The elm was sawn into thin planks and most of the oak arrived in bent shaped pieces of trees known as crooks. These were used for making the knees, apron, stem and deadwood in the boat. There would also be a long length of oak from which the boat's keel would be sawn. It took around three months to build a new boat and was extremely hard work. When I started working for Bob, my first job was cutting the keel out of a huge 18 inch by 6 inch by 22 foot long oak plank, all with a small handsaw. It took me all day. Work started in the boathouse at 8am and the day finished around 5.30pm with half an hour for dinner. My pay then was £1.10 shillings a week before stoppages. Four of us worked in the boathouse, Bob Abel, his son Robert, myself David Scarden and Colin Bolton, a good team and we got on well. Many boats were built here over the years and Bob was notorious for perfection. Everything had to be perfect. It would take hours to describe how a clinker boat is built. Stocks were laid and a boat would be finished in around 12 weeks. The task of getting it out of the workshop then began. Many boatmen were engaged in this operation. The doors of the workshop were slid open and greasy woods laid up Copping Street. Everyone heaved on the boat and she was slowly pulled up to Bob's plots at the top of Brewer Street where she would be launched. After trials she was handed over to the owner. Bob at this period also had a fleet of angling boats called the Blue Line. These were stationed at the top of Brewer Street, which consisted of the Bridget, the Idy, the Ursula, the Diana and a couple of paddle punts. I gained my boatman's licence at 14 years old. Many times whilst working in the boathouse I was offered an angling party. This was great and got me out of the workshop and out to sea for the day, all for two and sixpence which came out of my pay at the end of the week. The first fibreglass was used by Bob and decking was laid on a speedboat that we built. We continue to use wood only after this. Robert Abel, Bob's son, was a great friend. When the boats were moved to the top of King Street alongside my father's, we did much fishing together and many stories are here to be told. We built the Rob Marie. She was named after Robert and his wife, Marie. The Sail Wester and the Ocean Gift were also built to join the Blue Line fleet. Bob still had the ID, the Bridget and the Diana. If anyone has ever seen the anchor that is situated by the Tyneball Tower, here is a short story. When the moorings were being dug by the shelter at the top of King Street for Bob's winches to be put in, this anchor was uncovered. It was hauled out by one of Belzel's cranes and carted away. Nothing was seen of it for a long time. Then we were told a new timber stock was made and the anchor restored. It was then placed by the Tyneball. The yearly National Boat Angling Competition was held at Deal and on many occasions Robert used to take Jack Hargreaves out with the camera crew and do the filming. Great days now long gone. Angling parties in the 1960s were a major source of income for the Dill boatmen 
and Dill was known for its great fishing. This led to many orders for new boats to be built at Bob Abel's yard, and it was always very busy. The average price of a 20-foot clinker-built boat, all complete with engine, was £300. No mean sum then. Bob Abel and his wife Joan were also ardent salvationists. Bob played the trombone and Joan the piano. You could see Bob with the band on many occasions as they played in the streets of Deal and by the shelter at the top of King Street on a Sunday. Great days now long gone. Although I used to run my father's boats, I worked with Robert as well. We used to haul huge fleets of Wilk pots every morning before starting down the workshop. The Wilks were cooked in a copper, then many of them shelled and the rest were bagged in nets holding four gallons of cooked Wilks each and then they were sent to London. Robert and myself also trawled in Sandwich Bay in the Selwester and we had some great catches. On one occasion, whilst trawling in the fairway, myself and Dave Trice hit a wreck off the Guildford Hotel. This was marked with land bearings and always kept in our head. I was out with Robert one night and warned him about the wreck, but we hit it and hung up. After getting free, Robert arranged to get John Rees, the diver, down to take a look. On diving the wreck, it was discovered that there were hundreds of lead ingots lying on the seabed. We started salvage operations in the Selwester, as she had a mechanical lifting winch. Many were brought ashore, but I never saw any reward from this operation, as I was told the state took the find. Another long story. Stories could go on forever about Dill Marine Craft, but there was never such a good boat builder as Bob Abel. I'm proud of what he taught me, and his boats were the best. In the 1960s and 1970s, you would see over 100 boats lying in the beach at Dill many of which were built in Dill Marine Craft in Middle Street by Bob Abel. The boats and boatmen of those tranquil old days in Dill have now long gone, and the old workshop Dill Marine Craft has been replaced with modern houses, leaving no sign of its previous use, now just history to be remembered. <laughs>